And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Ryan Metzler. Hey everybody, it's Ryan Metzler here, and today we're looking at one of the two-player Cosmos games. We're looking at Kahuna. This is a area controllish type of game using cards and sticks, uh, and it's suitable for probably ages 8 and up. It says 10 and up, but I think it's a little simpler than that. Maybe good for a family, so why don't we take a look at what's inside this box, how it plays, and maybe what I think of it a little bit. So here we have everything included in the box for Kahuna except for the rules, which are almost too simple to even bother going over. So I'm just going to do it from memory and show you what the game is like. First though, let's take a look at the components. So we have these nice round markers. And these are going to be area control markers. You can see they, they have a little hand on them. Uh, and these are going to be placed on islands that each player controls on this board here. Uh, they come in black and white. They're made out of wood and they're very nice. Um, I actually didn't get one with my game and Rio Grande was nice enough to replace it, so that was good. It also comes with a bunch of little wooden markers that are meant to be bridges between islands. And I'll explain how these come into play here in a little bit. But there's a bunch of these little wooden markers and the pieces are pretty good quality. They come in black and white, one for each player. Additionally, we have a deck of cards. And you can see here, there's, there's not too many cards, it's a pretty small deck. Um, these cards are what are going to be used in order to gain control of these islands on the board. The concept of this game is that at the end of each round, you want to have the majority of the islands underneath your own possession. And you're going to be doing this by building bridges in between each island, using these cards. Now, players are going to start with a hand of cards, and on their turn, they'll be able to draw one at the end of their turn that they think is most uh, beneficial to their, to their playstyle. There'll be three face up, or they can draw one face down from the deck. Players will be use, using these cards in order to place bridges around the island. So they may play, for example, the Barry card, and the Barry card would allow them to place a bridge between Barry, which is located here, and any of the islands that are connected by these dots, as long as there's not a bridge already there. So, for example, they could use a Barry card to play a bridge between Barry and Aloha. When a player has over half of the bridges built to an island from their own color, so for example, if white were to build bridges between Barry and Alai, so now they've got two of five, and then Barry and Fa, for example, they have three of five, that's over 50%, they now control this island, and they would put one of their markers on it. Now, if black were to have any bridges on the island at the time that white had finished, all of black's bridges would be destroyed on this island. So, for example, between Barry and Dutta, this bridge would get destroyed. That can affect the control on other areas, and Black may lose some of their control on islands that they had three on. For example, uh, if they had over 50% of Dutta, let's say they had these three bridges here, which is over 50% and this one gets destroyed, they no longer have control. So, they had control previously, they lost a uh, bridge, they no longer have control. And this is how you're going to affect your opponent's placement on the board. Now, there's another way to affect placement on the board, and that you may play cards to remove your opponent's bridges, but it costs more to do so. For example, you must play two cards in order to remove a bridge between two islands, and those two cards must match only the two islands that you're trying to remove the bridge between. So, for example, if I wanted to remove this bridge between Barry and Aloha, I would either need two Barry cards, two Aloha cards, or one Barry and one Aloha card in order to remove that bridge. If I were to do so, I would then have white lose possession of the bridge or of the island, and the game would move on, each trying to vie for different control of different areas. <clears throat> the game is continued to be played until the deck runs out of cards, and all of the three face-up cards that are the last three are taken. So essentially, once all of the cards have been taken out of the deck, each round will end, and you'll play three rounds throughout the game. The first round is scored, and you look at whoever has the most control of islands. So let's say black controlled here and here and yellow controlled here, sorry, white controlled here, here, and there. Uh, and the bridges would, would indicate this. White would win this round, and in the first round, winning is worth one point. You'll then play a second round, and once all the cards are gone again, you'll look at the control of the island. So let's say maybe black's now controlling four and white three. Black will now score two points in the second round. So the first round's worth one point, the second round is worth two. At this point, you'll obviously have a clear leader. Either one player will have three points, or one will have two, and one will have one. You'll play a third round, and at the end of the third round, the actual score is the difference between the amount of controlled islands. So, for example, if white were to control five and black four, white would score one point in the last round, because five minus four is one. 
In this case, obviously you add that to any points scored previously, and whoever has the most points at the end of the game is the winner. So that's Kahuna. Now, you haven't seen very many negative reviews from me, and this one's going to get a little bit of a... eh. The game just doesn't have that much going on. It might be good for, you know, a, a father and a son or a father and a daughter, uh, you know, a little bit younger, playing an easy game. Um, there's not that much strategy to it. I mean, yes, you have to figure out which cards you want to pick up at the end of the round. You have to figure out when to play your cards, how to best use two cards at the same time in order to get rid of a bridge. But really, there's not that much behind it. As a matter of fact, this game is currently on my trade list. Um, I've been trying to get rid of it and I haven't been able to, and it's not that it's a bad game. It's just not a great game, and it's not something I think I need in my collection. I do play a lot of two-player games, but there are pretty much a dozen or more that I'd much rather play over this. Thanks for joining us today. For more written, audio, and video reviews, as well as the number one board game podcast, check out the website at www.thedicetower.com. Until then, this is Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.